Well, hey there, and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman, and today we are going to continue walking through uh, 1 Peter, and we're going to continue to wrestle with this uh, this theme of suffering for our faith, this uh, this tension that we hold, recognizing that, that the world will not always be pleased with us as believers because of the truth that we hold to. And today we're going to look at how this is, honestly, this is something we, we should expect. And even though we expect it, we should not make excuses for bad behavior when facing suffering or when we're treated poorly. See, here's how sometimes it can work in, in our lives. We might say something like, well, I experienced something bad or something that was unfair. And so because of that, that's why I acted in this way. That's why I treated someone poorly. Well, listen, that's actually, um, that's not the biblical ethic. That's not the ancient way for our modern day. Let me show you what I mean. If you want to turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, this is where the text begins. Verse 12, Peter says, he says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. Uh, Don't say, how could something like this happen to me? I'm going through something hard. Why why is this happening to me? He says, "Don't, don't don't be surprised, right? Verse 13, But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Peter says, he says, when you're suffering, you can rejoice knowing that just like Christ suffered, you are suffering. And just like Christ was glorified, you will experience that that glorification. You will be with Christ in his glory. This is, the, this is the promise that is uh, being declared to us. The text continues, verse 14. It says this, it says, If you are insulted, insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the Spirit of God and the glo- and God, Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. So look, if someone's insulting you because of your trust in Christ, that's actually a blessing. <laughs> they might curse you, yet you are blessed in Christ. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. So here's the tension. When we suffer, um, we might want to kind of uh, enter into our suffering with a victim mentality that gives us permission to do whatever it is that we think we need to do in that moment so that we can be taken care of. He uses some extreme examples. He says, a murderer or a thief, an evildoer or a meddler. He says, we we might say that we can justify our evil deeds in our suffering, but he says, don't suffer that way. Don't suffer that way. Instead, suffer as a Christian, someone who is living a godly life, reflecting the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ and glorify in God. Glorify in God. Verse 17, it says this. It says, For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Let's just pause here for a minute before we continue in verse 18. It says, look, judgment begins in the household of God. We can't be those who are trusting in Christ and then behaving like the world and expect God not to deal with us appropriately. Uh, God is going to purify us. God is going to, he is going to discipline his children toward godliness. We're not to look for excuses for sinful behavior, but rather we're to remain holy in our behavior even when suffering. Verse 18, and Quoting the Old Testament, if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become become of the ungodly and the sinner? This is the the end result. It says, listen, if we are saved by grace, not because of our behavior, (laughs) let's recognize that judgment is coming on those outside as well. But it starts with the Lord dealing with us. The Lord wants to deal with the church. The Lord wants to deal with the the church's sense of self-righteousness 
or entitlement. The Lord wants to deal with the church in our selfishness and in our greed, in our lustfulness and in our arrogance. The Lord wants to deal with us. He wants us to not allow our suffering to be an excuse for sin, but rather to propel us toward righteous living. Verse 19, Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. This is God's desire. That when we suffer, we entrust ourselves to God. That we trust that God will, he will rescue us into his eternal kingdom where we will share in glory, even though today we might share in suffering. Now, years ago, someone asked me if, uh, if I feel like I ever suffer, if I ever suffer for my faith. And, and I gave a few examples. I, I have some situations in my life that um, loved ones don't appreciate the fact that I trust in Jesus. But I, I, I share that recognizing that I'm not being physically harmed. My, uh, my economic opportunity is not being infringed upon. We, we are not facing the, the kind of persecution the first century believer did yet. Yet. Our culture is growing increasingly antagonistic toward those who trust in Christ. Those who trust in Christ, it will cost you more and more to be a believer and to follow Jesus, to say the things the scripture says. Here's the question. Here's, here's the question that I'm going to bring to you today. Are you willing to continue to live a holy, godly life, clinging to the convictions of scriptures, regardless of whether suffering comes. And when that comes, will you continue to be faithful to God? Will you continue to do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing? Uh, or will you look for shortcuts? Will you look for ways to, to blend in with the culture or to be a victim and so have a victim's mentality that says, well, now I'm entitled to this? Or will you entrust your soul to your creator? See, the suffering you experience does not surprise God in the least. The difficulty you go through uh, does not worry the Lord. He is sovereign over that and he will care for you Will you trust in that care? And this is the ancient way for our modern day.